It happened on April 25th, 1920. Representatives of the great powers who triumphed in World War I met in the Italian town of San Remo to divide the Middle Eastern lands they conquered. Ninety years later to the day, Christians and Jews gathered on the same spot to commemorate the event. The leaders of the great powers who met here in San Remo 90 years ago are long gone. But their decisions made history and transformed the Middle East. For the first time in nearly 2,000 years, they called for the establishment of a homeland for the Jewish people in an area called Palestine. Before its defeat in World War I, the 400-year-old Ottoman Empire spread throughout the Middle East. In San Remo, England, France, Italy, and Japan, along with the United States as an observer, divided the empire into three mandates, Iraq, Syria, and Palestine. France would oversee Syria, while Iraq and Palestine fell under Great Britain. The resolution also included the Balfour Declaration, written by England's Lord Balfour in 1917, which called for the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. One English diplomat, Lord Curzon, called it Israel's Magna Carta. Thomas Sandel of the European Coalition of Israel helped organize the 90th anniversary of the signing of the San Remo Resolution. Chaim Weizmann said at the time, you can say that uh, Israeli state was born on the 25th of April uh, 1920 in San Remo, because that was the significance of it. The San Remo Resolution was the uh, preeminent document for Jewish rights to the land of Israel. Howard Grief, author of The Legal Foundation and Borders of Israel under International Law, says the resolution established several precedents. It was adopted by the League of Nations and signed by 51 countries. Exclusive legal and political rights in Palestine went to the Jews, while those same rights in the rest of the Middle East went to the Arabs. The Arabs got the lion's share. I mean, they got Syria, which was subsequently uh, divided into Syria and, and Lebanon. They got all of Mesopotamia and, uh, and all of Arabia. <laughs> and this is what Balfour himself said. He said, why are you complaining? You're getting all, all these lands and we're granting a niche. He called it a niche uh, to, uh, to the Jewish people who were getting at uh, Palestine. Grief also says the 1920 San Remo resolution supersedes later UN resolutions. There is such a thing in international law. Once you've recognized a certain situation and the, the matter is executed, you can't change it. The UN General Assembly exceeded its authority, exceeded its jurisdiction. It did not have the power to divide the country. But what about those contested Israeli settlements in the West Bank? Many people, including the current Secretary General of the UN, say they are illegal. Settlements are covered in Article 6 of the Mandate for Palestine, again, the legal international document of the Mandate for Palestine, and clearly says that not only the Jews have the right to uh, settlement, that the world has the obligation to help them to settle. This legal right of Jews to build in the West Bank or East Jerusalem is little understood in the world today. It's a situation that Thomas Sandel hopes to remedy. We feel that we have a historical duty to just bring the facts on the table, because we are here dealing with historical facts. And this should be known, this should be taken into consideration in the public debate. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, San Remo, Italy.